Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another sculpting video. Today, I will be sculpting myself as a Tim Burton character. Okay, so I've had this idea for a pretty long time. I think since I started my channel two years ago and I just never got around to doing it. I don't know why, It just I think it's because it kind of intimidates me. I've never sculpted myself. I've never really even drawn myself. <laughs> so the first thing that comes to mind is like Victor from Corpse Bride. Like I feel like I could do like long skinny limbs, like classic Tim Burton style there, and then kind of figure out the head when I get there. <laughs> I think I know what I look like. I don't know. I might have to bring a mirror in here at one point, but I think I'm ready to do this. I'm actually off to a very late start today. It's like five o'clock in the afternoon and I have nothing yet, but that's okay. We're gonna work. I got all night, I got all day tomorrow and the next day. So this is also the first sculpture that I'm making in this format that is going to have an entire body and it's gonna be on a base. Every sculpture that I've done so far like this has been just like a bust. So I'm ready to take the leap and make a full figurine. You're really coming along with me for the ride. <laughs> And I'm at the point right now where I'm definitely second guessing myself. I'm trying to think like, what else can I make instead of this? And that's okay. Do you ever get like that? Before you start a sculpture, you just like completely lose all faith in yourself. Cause that's kind of where I'm at right now. But anyway, yeah. So let's get started. <laughs> So if you're familiar with my other videos, when I make figurines on these little wooden bases, I have already drilled two holes into the base for the armature wire. I'm using this stuff. I don't know what gauge it is, but it's bigger than 12 gauge. Maybe it's like six gauge. It doesn't say on the packaging, but um, I get it at Michael's. I really like it because it's pretty strong and it's still aluminum, so it's very flexible and it stays in the exact position you put it in. I know with like steel wire, you can bend it and then it'll like fling back the other way. So I like aluminum wire, it's my favorite. And then sometimes I'll actually use bamboo skewers for the legs too, you guys know that. So I'm going to stick this into the base and we're gonna get this show on the road. All right, so that looks like that. And then how tall do I want this to be? I think we'll go like nine inches like I normally do. Something like that. We'll just eyeball it because I don't measure. I don't want to have like a super tiny waist because I don't have a super tiny waist. That's a good size, I think. All right, so we got legs and a torso. There we go, it's in all the way. So, so far, this is what we got. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, let's do the arms with some 12 gauge and then I'm going to attach them with this smaller gauge aluminum wire that I got in the Jazza box. Now I know you've seen this a million times, but you've never seen it live. <laughs> so I hope that this offers you more insight into my process because normally I'm like doing the voiceovers and I'm just like, now I'm gonna attach the arms with another piece of wire like this. Like now I'm not doing that. Now you can see me like <sighs> second guess everything. You know, I don't even know where my sculpting tools are. Crap. Well, we're gonna have to find those. One time I thought I lost my spoon tool and I swear to God, I don't think I've ever been more like worried in my life. So, okay, normally I would use ultralight to do this, but like I said, I'm off to a late start. So we're just gonna use foil and bulk out the torso here. Got an email, oh, my cell phone bill was withdrawn. So yeah. Okay, you know, nothing crazy yet. <laughs> Everybody used to use masking tape all the time. Simpler times, I tell you. I still think that's a great trick. I just don't, I just don't really seem to need it for this right now. And I just use the ultralight non-set because it's way easier. So I don't have masking tape. I have no idea where that went. I haven't used it in so long. So we're just gonna use painter's tape to secure the front. It's funny, like I'm making myself and I'm using like a really old technique to do it. This is like 
vintage ace of clay right here <laughs> okay so we got this can't complain can't complain and now it's time to cover all of this fun armature in clay and then i cannot forget to put the neck on which is this this thing is so dirty maybe that's a little too wide for a Tim Burton character, so we're just gonna kind of force it a little smaller. <laughs> I'm just really concerned about the head. I know I can do this body, like I'm not even thinking twice about it. It's just that face that kind of worries me. We'll see. Very nice, okay. Torso complete. Now it's time to do the legs. So do I want to be as skinny as Jack or do I want to be a little, a little thicker? I think that's a good thickness. So in here I'm just cutting a slit down my snake of clay. So I'll make it hopefully wrap around the wire easier. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then if you're having trouble attaching your clay to the wire, which I know a lot of people have trouble with that, wrap a smaller gauge wire around it and that'll kind of help anchor the clay, or you can just put bacon bond directly on the wire, and that helps too, believe it or not. Put on there like that, nice and even. I'm going to start pressing on my little snake of clay. And you'll see it's going to adhere very nicely, and it's actually not gonna slide around. pretty good. It's like dog hair everywhere. Oh, and then I have to add the skewer for the neck. I can't forget that. Cause I hate having to go back and drill after the sculpture is cured. You can totally though. Like you can drill on this stuff just fine. It won't crack. It's really weird. There we go. Got the body yaddy 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 yaddy. Now I'm going to add the skewer for the neck. Make sure it's in the middle. I always screw this up. So I Googled like some inspiration for like what I want to look like as a Tim Burton character, I guess you could say. And I feel like the closest thing is Coraline's dad. And that's not even a Tim Burton character. That's Henry Selleck and Laika. But you know, it's Tim Burton style. Like they both got the same, you know, thing going on. Oh, come on. The scissors aren't gonna cut it. No pun intended. Oh, maybe for another a bonus video, maybe I'll do a mukbang. <laughs> Cause I love eating. So now I guess we're gonna do the shoes. Should we do the shoes? Let's do the shoes. I wanna have, give him like little tiny feet like Jack has. Tiny little feet, the tiny little Tim Burton feet. Sometimes I wish I had like a British accent. I think they sound very sophisticated. I feel like all I do is just like mumble. I could talk in a British accent and be a little different. I don't know if you'd like it or not, but I feel like I sound more intelligent with the British accent. Is that bad? Is that cringy? I'm trying to master my Australian accent. Oh, can I say in an Australian accent? Nothing. Gonna go to the Bobby. <laughs> I actually sat down and watched a YouTube video on how to do an Australian accent and I kind of got it. But I just, I totally forgot. I could do a Southern accent. This is my Southern accent. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I love Southern accents too. I have this like Midwestern or whatever accent. Like I say, you know, I say instead of like mirror, I'll say mirror and it's a squirrel, not a squirrel. Crayon is crayon. <laughs> Pass the crayon. Pass the crayons. There we go. We've got the tiny little Tim Burton feet situation here. These are going to be converse. I'm just capping off the pants with a flattened snake of clay. I'm gonna take explorer tool and define the sole. Oh, 
Okay, now for some tiny little shoelaces. Here we go, there's my tiny little converse. All right, so now I wanna go in and I'm gonna add some subtle little wrinkles to the legs, just here and there, just to kinda make them not look like sticks. This is one of my favorite things to sculpt right here, wrinkles on clothing and folds. I just love doing it. If you can't tell, I do it often. That's about all it needs, I think. Let's move on to the arms. Now, what should I be holding? Should I be holding anything? Sculpting tools, a sculpture of myself, maybe I'll be holding this sculpture of myself. Sculpture Inception, and that sculpture I'll be holding another sculpture, and that one will be holding another one. Maybe I won't be holding anything. Maybe I'll be holding your hand. I think I wanna wear a t-shirt and then an open Zip up hoodie. I think I like that idea. It's always easier for me to add clay then take it away. It's just how my brain works. I'm not much of a subtractive sculptor. At least I don't know if I am or not because I haven't really even tried it. Maybe I'll try carving something one day. But um, I just, it just makes more sense in my brain to add clay than remove it. I would rather put on not enough clay and add more than put on too much clay and have to take some away. Look at that, all right. Um, getting excited now. I just really hope that I can pull the head off. Oh yeah, you know what? I think the sleeves are gonna be rolled up. I never have my sleeves all the way down if I'm wearing a long sleeve. Okay, so my sleeve is gonna come up. It's gonna be rolled up here. And you know that rolled up like fabric, that's gonna add another level of detail too. I just need to make this like an arm, arm skin. <laughs> so I do have to remove some clay for this because it's going to be significantly thinner than the hoodie sleeve, so I need to be very, very careful not to hit the wire. It's time for those rolled up sleeves. A little zigzaggy piece of zigzaggy snake to create the bunched up fabric. Now we're going to work our way onto the chest. I don't know if I want to wear like a v-neck or a crew neck. I wear crew necks more than v-necks, don't I? Why don't I have the answer to that? <laughs> I think I do, I think I wear crew necks. Neck I want to be really skinny, but not as skinny as the arms. Nice skinny little neck. And then let's do the collar. Like I was thinking earlier, like do I want it to, do I want to wear like an ace of clay shirt? Is that stupid? You can always paint it on later, right? We're doing crew neck, even though I'm wearing a V-neck today. I'm having so much fun right now. Like I'm not even joking. I'm really enjoying myself. This format is so refreshing for me. I really hope you guys like it because I almost think that like I can't go back to my old format now because I like this one so much. Um, I like it, yeah, it's fine. And then, <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll do a couple of wrinkles like across the chest. Cool. 
All right, I like that. Now we're going to create the end of the shirt here. I don't ever tuck in my shirts. They're always untucked. nice now I need to add the hoodie which is gonna come down lower than the shirt it's over so let's do that now um, I think I like this length really dull blade don't do that let's trim the back I need to make sure that I'm not just thinking of things to say because I do that a lot where I'll think something and I think I think I'm saying it out loud and then when I go to edit, I didn't say anything at all. So I need to like consciously say my thoughts out loud when I'm doing this. So just trim to the back there. And we're gonna connect them here. And then I don't want the extra bulk, so I'm going to cut off the excess. Like we're just gonna let that go over there. And then I'm gonna cut off this excess here. Look at that. And then this is gonna have like a little like baby zipper on it. Gonna add a tiny little lip underneath here. This is gonna be kind of tricky, but I feel like it's a detail that I really wanna add. See what a difference that made, that little lip under there? That looks more like a hoodie than a cardigan. <sighs> Check it out. So for this next part, I wanna flatten out this lip here on the inside and make it into a zipper. I'm not going to add any clay for this, I'm just going to sort of push the zipper shape into the clay. go. Now I need to see what side the zipper goes on because I don't know. <laughs> now for the hoodie. The hoodie. The hood. This is just going to be I guess a little triangle shape. We're just going to sort of freehand it in the air here. How cool is that? Look at that hood there. That really finished it off, didn't it? Now we're gonna do some of those little strings hanging off. We're gonna make those out of cosplay though. So really all I have left to do is my hands. So I think I'm just gonna do those now and get them over with. I wanna make a little spoon tool, how about that? All right, so I am exactly four hours in and I am very happy with the progress I made. I like the lankiness of this. I like how the arms are very exaggerated and of course the legs are. And I think it came out pretty good so far. I'm a little nervous to sculpt my face tomorrow, but we're gonna do it. I'm gonna just 
basically be sculpting like a simplified version of my face. So see how that goes. Anyway, I will see you tomorrow. And we're back for day two of sculpting myself as a Tim Burton character. Today we are going to do my head and face. And I have no idea how this is going to go. I hope smoothly. I had a good night's sleep. I woke up on time. I got, you know, I'm feeling good. All right, to say the least. So I think I'm ready to tackle this. I got my Super Sculpey Firm. I'm gonna be using this for the face just because it gives me a little bit more control, especially when I don't know what I'm doing. And the gray color lets me see the detail a little bit better. And I just want, I just want to use Firm for the head. Um, so yeah, I have no idea what this is gonna look like when it's done. I have no idea what I'm doing or how I'm going to approach this, but I guess we're just gonna put some clay over some aluminum foil and see where it takes us. I didn't draw this out at all beforehand. I probably should have, but I never do that. So why start now? <sighs> all right, I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna start by moving this out of the way because we're not using that anymore. I right, tell you right now, I took too much aluminum foil. All right, I think that's a good core shape or size. So I was looking at some Tim Burton characters last night and this morning, and I was kind of thinking like how I want it to look. And I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna do like a basic head shape. I have a pretty long face, I think. And then of course, like the big wide open eyes with the tiny little pupil iris in the middle of them. And then for my expression, I think I wanna look scared or like surprised, like, or like, or like, I don't know. The hardest part is gonna be making it look like. <laughs> do I really have to look at a picture of myself while I do this? Probably. Okay, okay, um, okay. So I don't have like a pointy chin. I have a pretty round chin. I don't have like a crazy jawline either. Why is the lighting, I still, I said this yesterday too, but like the lighting is really good today on this camera. I don't know what I'm doing differently. Victor from Corpse Bride. His head was pretty big. Is this too big? Might be too big. Yeah, it's too big. Cause it's gonna be bigger too when I add my hair. Cause my hair stands up a little bit. That's a good size. That's a good size. I think we got the size. Okay. Now let's get this party started here. The chin should probably be bigger. Hmm. I feel like this needs to come down more here. about this is that I don't have any really like crazy distinguishing features that's going to make this just look like me right off the bat like I don't have like a different like crazy unique colored hair my like beard that I have isn't super like apparent you know what I mean like I don't I don't really wear glasses I do wear glasses but not enough where it would be like a defining characteristic like you wouldn't see a drawing of me and be like oh you need to add his glasses <laughs> I think I think we've hit the head shape. Let's try to hit everything else. For the nose, I think I have a pretty big nose. So I have not hit the aha moment yet. I feel like we can push this brow up even higher. I keep forgetting like I gotta exaggerate this or else it's not gonna look right. Or it's gonna look like I'm trying to do a realistic sculpture and I stopped before it was finished. Like, I don't want it to look like that. For the eyes, I want them to be really big. To 
take my spoon tool here and join the eye with the rest of the face while still maintaining its shape. All right, so far so good. Let's try to do that again on the other side. How's that? We're getting somewhere. Okay, I don't wanna to feel too confident yet because all I have is two eyes and a nose and the eyes are just circles. <laughs> so we're going to not be overconfident and keep chugging along, but so far so good. Like I said, I want to do that lower eyelid, so let's take a little tiny snake of clay and make it a little bit bigger than that. Just want to tuck that bottom edge in like that. So yeah, while I do this, what are you working on right now? Are you sculpting something? Are you drawing something? Are you painting something? Are you doing a load of laundry? Let me know in the comments. Check it out. We've got bags under the eyes. A staple in my appearance. <laughs> um, okay, so for the mouth, I think I want the mouth to be open a little bit. I think I want to be like, huh? Going to fill in that mouth. I want to smile, I think. I think I'm going to smile. No teeth. I think it kind of looks like me. You know what it looks like? It looks a lot like my mom. <laughs> like maybe I should just make the, my mom into a Tim Burton character. I kind of see it. I kind of see it. It's, I think my mouth is smaller though. It's a little too big. I don't want this to be like the whole, it's like right there, like right by my nose. See it? See my little mole? Got the lint in my clay too. What a shame. Let's do some little ears. Now I'm going to brush the entire surface with clay softener, terminal fingerprints, and we're gonna bake it. A couple drops on my face. <laughs> I'm like really surprised that this came out how it did. Like, I think it kind of looks like me. What? I was not expecting it to be like this. Okay, so I'm going to attach this to the body with some bacon bond, and then I'm gonna do the hair, or should I do the hair and then attach it? Should I do the hair separately? <laughs> okay, that's a little, little long for the neck. I think this is gonna end up being like my favorite sculpture that I've ever made. Which is really, I feel like narcissistic because it's a sculpture of myself, but like, I am really happy with this stupid thing. I like it. I think it looks good. We're gonna, the painting is gonna be fun. I'm excited to see what this guy looks like painted up. 
And then if you're wondering how I bake my sculptures, I put them in, of course, 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes for a sculpture this size. And I have aluminum foil over the heating elements in my oven. I have a gas oven, but there is still a heating element at the top. So I make sure I cover that with aluminum foil to avoid scorching. And like this guy's got some tiny little, you know, fingers and limbs and stuff. So I need to make sure that none of those burn. And if they do burn, it's not the end of the world. I can always just paint over it, but um, it's nice to do it right. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then I normally bake on a glass Pyrex dish, so I know a lot of you guys ask me how I bake my stuff, and that is how. Okay, I'm gonna go do that, and I'll be right back. And we're back. I'm fresh out of the oven, completely cooled down, and ready for some hair. So for the hair, I'm just gonna use um, the regular Super Sculpey, and then I might do some like little wisps of hair with some cos clay. So this will be fun. This will be a nice little relaxing process, and then we're gonna pop them back in the oven, then cool them down again and then we'll paint. All right, so I have had the same hairstyle since like 2010. I think I established this do. So 11 years. Before this, I used to have a middle part. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying all this stuff right now. Who cares? Nobody cares. Well, I'm just gonna coat the head with some bacon bond. Okay, so if I go, I normally go like off to this side, like whoosh. So this would be going that way. So I'm gonna do kind of like a little swoosh thing. And then we'll do sideburns that turn into like a little beard, if you wanna call this a beard. Maybe kind of give them a little fade on the sides. <laughs> gonna add this little blob to the top, but I wanna make sure I'm not like breaking my neck. I'm happy with that head shape. Whatever, it looks fine, right? I'm gonna take a little bit and we're gonna add a very thin piece here for the sideburns. And then, like I said, this is going to turn into my beard. Sideburn number one. Okay, so how does my hair look? It's just a basic flipped up. Um, let's bring the hairline back a little bit more. Who am I kidding? My hairline's not that good. I didn't get that. Could you try again? I wasn't talking to you, Siri. All right, so now I'd want to shape out the hair. I'm going to use Cosclay for the details in the front of my hair. I think this looks like me, doesn't it, a little bit? You can't tell me it doesn't look like me. I think it kind of does, for the fun part. I always like sculpting hair. Now I'm trying to think, should I texture the hair before I put this on? Probably. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. With my Explorer tool. I'm also really glad that I made these little things on a cosplay too because I would have busted them off already. Okay, now for the top here, I need to do some, so this is going like this way, so I want everything to kind of go to the other side. Very nice, nice texture. Check it out, look at that full head of hair. All right, I'm going to go bake myself again and I will be right back. And we're back and we're ready for paint. I'm looking pretty good. All right, so the first thing I'm going to paint on this is going to be the skin. I always do the face first whenever I'm doing like a person because that's the hardest part. All right, let's see if I like this color. Oh, that's okay. I had so much fun with this sculpture and all I did was stress out about it all week before I started because I'm like, how am I gonna do it? What is it gonna come out good? Like, do I have enough time? It's like, you know what? I just need to chill out. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to dab a nice little dark circle around each eye and then I'm gonna go in and add some nice little details to the bags underneath. And so we're gonna use my fancy brush here. I'm going to darken my skin color a little bit more. Right now I'm going to wipe off most of that paint. 
And then don't be nervous. If you do this, you know, the worst thing that can happen is you just paint the skin all over again. What are you gonna do? So let's start dabbing. I'm excited. All right, for the eyes, I'm going to, I'm gonna use pure titanium white and mix that with a little bit of black. Well, if that doesn't look Tim Burton-y, I don't know what does. <laughs> oh, wow, I look pretty cracked out, huh? Okay, now next, hair. Like, my hair is really dark brown, but my eyebrows are like non-existent blonde. Tell me how that works. got hair not bad I think I want to highlight it just a little bit just to give it some dimension so it's not so flat now for my eyebrows <laughs> that I really don't even think I need to paint on I'm going to use a very light light gray mixed with my skin color Paint these little strings here. Now let's get that zipper nice and silver using my Folk Art Treasure Gold. My favorite line of metallic acrylic paints ever. Do the shoes and then we're going to do the beard. So I'm just gonna layer a ton of little lines. I feel like the beard like aged me a lot. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the base. My leftover black and brown. 
And I'm done! My sculpture of myself as a Tim Burton character is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments. This was a journey, but we made it. And we went on this journey together, and I was really skeptical at first. I really didn't think I was gonna like it this much, but I really, I'm really happy with how I turned out. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. I really not much to say. I think it looks like me. I think we've established that and Definitely, definitely looks like a Tim Burton character. As always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Ace of Clay, if you want more content from me outside of YouTube, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.